Taking deep breaths, keeping centered, everything is cool. This isn't the highest stakes comparison video I've ever made. My reputation totally isn't riding on this video. Just gonna relax and do my thing. Just kidding, I'm kind of freaking out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I'm fine, I'm fine. Really, gonna keep telling myself that until it's true. Look, here's the deal. Today I'm comparing the LG G3 OLED to the Samsung S95C OLED. And I've been anticipating this video for months now because I've been seeing the handwriting on the wall. More recently though, that's become nervous anticipation. Why? Well, it's actually great news for you both of these TVs are stellar. They are gorgeous. Each is so good, it's hard for me to imagine anyone buying either one of these TVs and being anything other than absolutely ecstatic. So that's it, right? Job done, go in peace, buy either one, right? You'll be stoked either way. Flip a coin, make it fun. Except that's not how this goes. Some of you out there are actually considering purchasing one of these TVs. They are expensive. You wanna get the right one. You're worried about FOMO. No, not that guy, he's harmless, don't worry about him. He's your friend. I mean the actual FOMO, the fear of missing out. And you might be worried about FOBO, which is not a real acronym. I just made that up and now that I've said it out loud, I understand why it isn't already a thing. But what I mean is fear of buyer's remorse. And for some of you, if you are being totally honest with yourself, you kind of just want to know with absolute certainty that you have the absolute best because you're sick and tired of that one annoying friend who's always getting the cool toys and you don't want to hear it from them on this one. You want to rub their face in your new, absolutely no question, the best TV. That is a thing. There's no sense in denying it. And that, my friends, is why I'm a little nervous going into this video because even though I know some things are subjective, even though I know I am not personally responsible for your happiness, I do feel a responsibility to give the best advice that I can. And breaking this all down in a way that is helpful to you and your individual needs, which are vast and varied. Y'all are a motley crew out there. I know I'm chatting with many of you right now. It's just, that's really hard. Not to mention the fact that there are multiple multi-hour live streams comparing these two TVs in excruciating detail. So I feel like I need to go in the other direction and keep this one kind of tight I'll do my best folks, okay? That's all I can promise. So with that off my chest, let's do this. Let's compare the LG G3 and the Samsung S95C. We'll start with the big picture, right? No pun intended, it's just impossible to avoid. And because I've covered a lot of this stuff in my individual reviews, I'm gonna move through this fairly efficiently. From a design perspective, both TVs are gorgeous, bezel-less wonders. Both will look outstanding wall-mounted. And to that end, the LG G3's advantage is that its no-gap wall mount is in the box with the TV. It doesn't come with a stand, it comes with a wall mount, and a great one at that. The S95C's advantage is that while it doesn't come with a wall mount, it does come with a One Connect box, which makes getting a clean look when wall mounting much, much easier since all of your stuff connects to this box and then the only thing running to the TV, the only thing is this one cable, which is easy enough to fish through the wall and far less of an eyesore if you just let it dangle down. Don't do the dangle though, you deserve better. If you're stand mounting, the S95C wins with a solid pedestal stand that is a bit much to assemble, but does its job well and with class. The stand that LG sells for the G3 is not my favorite to say the least. It wobbles because it's designed to rotate and is generally not up to the same premium standard as the TV itself. The remotes are quite different. I mean, you're gonna touch this every day, so you best like it, right? The Samsung remote is small, minimalist, charges itself with solar cells on the back or via USB-C and generally just works fine. LG Magic Motion remote still does the Wii thing, which I'm so over with at this point, and otherwise offers more buttons if that's your vibe. The smart TV interfaces that those remotes control look different but are functionally very similar. And frankly, I don't care for either of them. Not when Google TV, Apple TV, and even Roku exist. On the plus side, the TVs do offer a lot of smart home integration features, multi-window features, and 
other fun tricks like auto device recognition and elaborate gaming dashboards. Both TVs offer very low input lag for gaming, along with four HDMI 2.1 ports, one with eARC support. Both will support Dolby Atmos pass-through, but the Samsung will not support DTS pass-through. The Samsung also does not support Dolby Vision, but I'm getting there. Neither TV sounds as good as I would like it to, considering how expensive they are. Extra disappointing considering how many transducers are on the back of the Samsung. However, both TVs offer some unique audio integration with the soundbars made by their respective brands. So if you pair a Samsung soundbar with the S95C, you can take advantage of Q Symphony sound, or an LG soundbar with the G3 will enable LG sound sync. Now, let's talk about some picture quality differences. And I'm gonna start by painting some broad strokes, but we'll dive into some of the details before I finish. Let's start with brightness, shall we? Because with the addition of MLA, or micro lens array, the LG G3 has become one of the brightest OLED TVs to hit the market. MLA is seen by myself and many others as a very speedy retort to QD OLED after QD OLED became the darling of the TV enthusiast community in 2022. And as I said in my LG G3 review, MLA works. Actually, I think I said it's the truth, and I stand by that. MLA does a remarkable job of capturing what was once just lost, scattered light and porting it out to the viewer. The result is a very bright overall picture with a lot of punch. It will dazzle you, I promise you that. But if we dig slightly deeper into how the LG G3 gets so bright, it's gonna come down to the fact that it has a white subpixel that acts as a sort of brightness booster. That's always been the case with LG OLEDs, but with MLA added, it's now just more effective than before. The Samsung S95C, on the other hand, feels more like a old fashioned to me with a deep richness, complexity, and the pop of citrus and cherry. In the end, both will get you drunk on awesomeness. They just do it in different ways. Now, this is where you would think that a direct comparison of the TVs with them side by side like this would actually help. But I'm telling you, I think doing a direct side by side like this is more misleading than a lot of folks think, mostly because we lack a true reference display. Now, for those of you out there watching this that don't consider yourself a TV geek, I don't wanna lose you here because this is really important, so please stick with me, okay? Outside of using measuring tools, which only tell part of the story, getting a read on accuracy in color is very difficult unless you have a reference display, like a Sony BVM monitor that Hollywood content creators use as sort of the absolute truth. If we had one of those, then we could point to it and say, that right there is absolutely correct. And knowing that, we could look at the two other TVs and figure out which one was closest to correct. Now, I don't have a reference monitor here, so I can't do that. Do you have a $30,000 reference monitor kicking around your garage? Most of you are saying no right now. Those of you saying yes, give me a ring. I'd like to borrow that thing because it does not belong in your garage. Anyway, gauging accuracy is important, but just as important is what you like. I think I know what I like, right? At least I did until yesterday, but my own mind was playing tricks on me. Let me try to show you. Here's a scene from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which is a title I know my guy Vincent Tio loves to use, and I can see why. This is on the G3. I'm watching it and I love it. It looks fantastic. Look at this lady here. She looks good, right? Skin tone seems about right. Maybe a little pale, but it's not wildly off like I see on lesser TVs. This is solid. Okay, now take a look at this kid's red hair. To me, that looks really natural. I like that color of her hair. And in this scene in the garden, that house's brick facade looks good to me. And the greens in the garden look awesome as well. I'm really enjoying myself watching this TV. What a great TV it is, guys. But now let's compare the two side by side and see what happens. Well, gosh, if I look at the S95C, this lady's face on the LG G3 almost seems pale in comparison. And the child's red hair almost looks faded on the G3 compared to the S95C. And the colors in this scene are a bit more intense on the S95C too. Wow, now my impression has changed. When I watched the LG G3 by itself, I didn't think the lady's face looked pale at all. It looked about right to me. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. 
My viewpoint was skewed because my perspective was forced to shift. When I watch the LG G3, it looks fantastic. But if I have the S95C doing its thing and I'm comparing, all I can see is the differences between the two. I can't really see the forest for the trees. And I'm not sure that's helpful. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that I prefer the S95C. And in some cases, I do. But there are also some concerns that creep up for me. Sometimes the reds on the S95C just seem a little overcooked to me. I don't know if that's because the TV can just be more intense than I'm used to seeing, or if they really are overcooked a bit. I also don't know what is correct either. So ultimately, I just have to decide which I like best. And I'm telling you, I'm not sure. I like so much about both TVs that deciding on just one is going to take a lot more time for me. I'm suffering from analysis paralysis here, and I don't think that's good. I don't want you to do the same thing. It's definitely not worth it. And besides, I have this luxury of sitting with these TVs for a few more days. Most shoppers don't get even a fraction of that time, unless you're cool with spending hours at the store and possibly annoying the sales associates, which you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But back to the comparison. We've covered brightness, color, and kind of by default, contrast, because both offer perfect black levels. What else can we scrutinize? And hold your horses, I'm, I'm getting to the Dolby Vision thing, I promise. Well, let's talk about motion resolution and upscaling. Motion resolution, because we want a pleasant experience watching both fast and slow paced action on the screen, and upscaling because we don't always get to watch 4K HDR high bit depth content, so we need to know what everyday cable or satellite or even YouTube TV might look like. I'll start with upscaling first because for me, it's super easy. They are identical in how they handled the hour or so of 2B TV content I watched. I kept hoping something would leap out and be notably different, and that just never happened. As for motion, they are both excellent. The only difference I saw, and I really had to look for it, whether it was a slow pan in 24 FPS cinematic content or fast moving sports action was with one element. And I've mentioned this in my reviews in the past. Sometimes slow moving bright objects can create a strobing or flashing effect due to the instant pixel response time that OLED has. It comes from a bit of frame stutter that is present with pretty much all TVs, but the instant response of the pixel means that it brightens up immediately. And because it does, you can see what seems like a flicker of sorts. And this is slightly more pronounced on the LG G3 because its white brightness tends to be a little more intense. I mean, folks, I'm really reaching here, okay? The difference is not at all dramatic. And I know this isn't what you wanna hear, but it doesn't push me one direction or another when making a decision on these TVs. Next, and this is a big unavoidable factor that I think many of you knew was coming, Dolby Vision. The LG G3 supports it and the S95C does not. Now, for some of you, that's just a deal breaker. For others of you, you're wondering if it should be a deal breaker. And I'm gonna have to be very frank here. I have not decided for myself if it is a deal breaker. The answer to that question is one I'm gonna have to dive into deeply and present in another video. And I promise you, I will make that video as soon as I can. However, for this comparison, what I can tell you is that I watched several titles in Dolby Vision on the LG G3 while watching the same title at the same time in HDR10 on the S95C. Why not HDR10 Plus, you might ask? I mean, true, it would be more fair to compare HDR10 Plus to Dolby Vision since they both offer dynamic metadata. But near as I can tell, there are precious few scenarios in which you would even have a choice between HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. There are a handful of exceptions. There are a few 4K Blu-ray titles that offer both. And on Amazon Prime Video, there are a couple of titles that offer both, like for one season of a couple of shows. But most of the time, it's an HDR10 versus Dolby Vision question. And I watched several titles this way. What I can tell you is that from what I watched, the differences I saw were not deal breaker level differences for me. And besides, I think what I experienced in terms of picture quality differences had more to do with how the TV handles the information it's getting than it does the quality and the depth of the information itself. SDR to SDR, HDR to HDR, the comparison ends up being about the same differences in character between the TVs 
not the supposed superiority of what Dolby Vision is bringing to the table, which again, we'll debate in a separate video. I'll say this on the matter. If you think that not having Dolby Vision as an option is gonna bug you, no matter what practical difference it does or doesn't make, if you just want the insurance that you're getting everything you can and the assurance that nothing is left on the table, well, you have two options. You can either go with the LG W OLED with Dolby Vision, or you can wait for the Sony A95L, which is the only TV that offers both QD OLED technology and Dolby Vision. But I'll also say that I would not personally pass on the S95C because it doesn't offer Dolby Vision. I've not seen anything that convinces me that Dolby Vision is bringing enough to the G3 to lure me to that side. So if you're wondering if not having Dolby Vision is a concern enough to not buy the S95C, my answer is no. It's not something that I would let impact my personal decision. One more thing we have to toss in here, burn-in risk. Look, I think if you're someone who watches the type of content with static image elements for really long periods of time per day, most days of the year, then an OLED TV in general is probably not right for you. But if we're talking about overall burn-in risk, there is some evidence provided by ratings.com that points to the G3 as being the more resilient of the two in this comparison. Otherwise, I have a whole series of burn-in videos I encourage you to watch to learn more. <sighs> Look, I've gone on for a while now. I think it's time for me to just come clean and say that this is the hardest comparison I've ever done between two TVs. And I still haven't decided which TV I would personally put in my room. I do know this though, no matter which I picked, I'd be delighted to have it in my home. I definitely want to have the TV calibrated to get the best color. Specifically, the Samsung's reds are just a bit much for me in the out-of-box filmmaker modes, but honestly, I'd be thrilled with either one. I like the One Connect box. I like the Samsung remote. I like the richness of color on the S95C, but I also like the zing of the LG G3. I like that it comes with a no-gap wall mount in the box, and I like that it supports almost everything there is to support. This may not be the takeaway you wanted, but I think it's the takeaway you need. These are both stellar TVs. There's no winner or loser in this competition for me. Which TV you get is gonna be a very personal decision, and I would urge you to make your delight the priority. In the end, very few of us are video professionals who scrutinize a display's performance extremely hard and need something very specific. But take it from someone who has made a living out of evaluating TVs for 13 years now. These are both so good that if I were forced to make a decision right now, right in this very moment, I might just have to flip a coin. It's a tough call and I wish you the absolute best when making your decision. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think? Have you already made your decision? Did this video help you make a decision? Please let me know in the comments so I can always do better. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's two other videos I think you might like.